as you see us live. This meeting is being live streamed. Cool. <clears throat> hey, wonderful. everyone. Hi. So this should be working. I hope we tried and the Facebook God was like, no, sorry, babe. We did, did not make the right sacrifices <clears throat> to no. the Facebook gods. No, if uh, anybody knows how to make the right sacrifices to the Facebook gods to go live together, please let us know. Oh my yes. God. We're back in the podcast of living and dying. Um, if you see Russell looking a bit, he's, he's trying to share the link from my feed to his feed. <laughs> so I'm going to just fill the void with my words. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I think you already enjoyed the last one. We decided to give you more because Russell said, I have so much to say. And I said, I have so much okay. to listen to. Um, and this is what we're doing today. We're going to be talking about... Actually, I was going to talk about dating, but Russell just said, let's talk about uncoupling. And I said, OK, um, <laughs> so we will see what we're going to talk about. You just stick around and see whether you're interested or not, because exactly. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to. And sex. We've, all got, we've, all, we've definitely got to talk about sex as well. OK, what do you want to start with? Oh, what's on people's minds? Most people, I imagine, are, are dating so that so that well i was going to say they're dating so they can have sex but no people date for all sorts of reasons don't they sex being one of one of many of them um so i guess i'm curious what what um perhaps what your listeners and what your audience is maybe grappling with in terms of dating especially in the modern well in the modern world in the world of instagram tinder bumble um hookups and so much choice the landscape has changed a lot yeah yeah i brought a few questions actually um for Correct. a friend <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> ask, ask for a friend. friend yeah i have many friends with many questions no the thing in my in my community right now at the moment is you know women yeah. awaken women getting into their feminine and um yeah starting to you know, unravel all the things that they've been suppressing, you know, all the, I think we all struggle with the uh, strong independent woman thing. And um, mm. if you're going I to start that. dating and you stop wanting to lead, which you're usually doing as the strong independent woman. Interesting. Interesting. On how to fucking stop leading and realize I love this. That he is the one yep. that we can give the lead to. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it. First of all, I love the context of like, yes, your people listening are, and women in general are strong. They're empowered to be confident and sovereign and to speak their words everywhere I look. Uh, women are encouraging women to speak their truth, to make a stand for what they want, um, to not settle for less you know, especially in the dating world, you know, for, yeah. And to, you know, and I see if I, if I had a dollar for every time I saw the word red flag on Instagram and Facebook, I'd have like all these dollars. So yeah, women, women are supporting women and men are definitely are also like good men are supporting women to, to be empowered, which looks like good boundaries, knowing what they want, communicating clearly, etc. And it poses a problem because I don't think most men have caught up. Uh, they haven't caught up with the pace at which women have been accelerating. Even myself, like I like to think I'm a pretty onto it guy. And even I have been, I've had to adjust sometimes. Um, I mean, I hang around with a lot of people of your caliber, Svenja. So I'm also being asked to, to up my game. So the question is, how do women, especially empowered, newly empowered women, um, learn to surrender and be in their feminine and kind of trust a man to to take the lead so that they can have the experience of um of uh surrendering. So first of all, I'm gonna say welcome to a man's world. You know, the the pressure to lead, the pressure to direct, the um the requirement, especially as a man, to kind of know what is going on and to direct can there's a pressure there right so it's it's not always easy so i think one of the first things is you're getting a sense empowered women are getting a sense of like oh this is what it's like to be in control 
or to have to be making the decisions and and penetrating the world okay so there is there is a sense of effort and responsibility and, and pressure required secondly i'm going to give you a beautiful quote from one of my favorite teachers nicole day Doan. so do you have you heard of nicole day Doan? yeah yeah right leader of the one taste movement uh you know teacher of orgasmic meditation which we can talk about when we get to the sex part of this podcast she's got this great phrase the pussy has the power let the man win which i love so what does that mean the pussy has the power you as the divine feminine as the holder of of beauty and creativity and mystery are things that men want okay you have the power and the way that you radiate your your femininity is something that's highly attractive to us you have the power let the man win means well very practically every time a man wins and that can look like something as simple as overtaking another car in traffic or having you say thank you for something that you that having you say thank you for something he does automatically lets him win it gives him a literal burst of testosterone um and he becomes more manly so as an empowered woman here's some very simple things you can do let's say that he drives you somewhere he picks you up he drives you somewhere you get there safely you hop out of the car you walk around you walk around to his side of the car you give him a little hug and a kiss on the cheek and say thank you for getting us safely here okay and <laughs> right simple thing like as a guy i i'm going to do that shit without thinking about it but you've just let me win at doing something I would do automatically. And yeah. all the ways you can let a man win just for being himself is going to literally give him a burst of testosterone. You watch, you know, he might, when you give him a kiss on the cheek and say, thanks for driving us safely, he might shrug it off, whatever, babe, it's all good. But you watch his steps afterwards and he's going to have a little bit more of a swagger. He might kind of grab you a little closer. He's going to, he's literally going to be more manly because he has more testosterone, little tiny squirt, and you can do that. So this way of praising, acknowledging, validating things that he kind of already does automatically, it's just, it's just so easy. The pussy has the power, let the man win at whatever he's doing. And um, it's so, it's so easy, so easy. And at the same time, it's like almost the, uh, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not his mom, you know, it's like almost praising the little boy in him having done something right and having made me so happy with something that he's naturally doing. And then comes this little voice in your head saying, yeah, I know exactly what he wants because there is this knowledge in every woman that you know exactly how to praise him you know exactly how to acknowledge him you know exactly how to make him happy and you are going to take it away to punish him for not giving you what you need right, right. so this is the first thing that we we start closing our hearts as soon as we feel that he's not meeting our needs but it's it's not a conscious thing it's not that i'm sitting in the car thinking oh no he's not you know he's not giving me this i i, I can't approach him in the way in the intimate way i want to so i'm not gonna open my heart again i'm not thinking this is not conscious thoughts but this is what's happening i'm not having my needs met so i'm gonna close my heart a bit and praising him you can only do that from an open heart like not from a doing the math, you know, okay, he's done this, so I'm going to do that. And now he's not doing this, so I'm not going to do that. This is what's naturally happening in us out of this very toxic safety thing to having to realize the moment when I need to leave. Like I'm piling up, piling up, piling up. You're getting less, uh -huh. and, less and less and less until I'm done, until I have to go. And this is not consciously happening but realize when you're closing up a bit and then not 
if you have if you have this you know while you were talking russell i had this voice in my head saying yeah but if i'm gonna gift him like that is he gonna gift me like i need it and this he, he this may not he may not yeah he may not and can you be can you be like um can can you not do the mass like can you just give with an open yes. heart yeah yeah i tell you what so in, in dating, okay, so there's this whole, there's a whole school of thought around when should you text? Should you wait for him to text you? Should you text for it? Okay. Uh, and, and in parallel with this thing of like doing the maths, he's going to do something. So then I'll do something. This is, this is my approach, which I have to say has been, is, has been very successful for many, many reasons. But when I feel something for a person um, and when I, when I want to praise them or when I want to connect with them, I will connect inside first with what feels good to me around sending that message. And once I've connected to that place, I will send the message. And I care from that point on, I care very little about how it's received, whether it was too early or whether I'd waited long enough or blah, 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 blah. I'm just tracking what feels good in me and doing it for its own sake. Like I, I met a friend, a new friend in town today. She is one of the most beautiful women I know. And I told her that we just bumped into each other in the fruit shop. My heart was open. I'm not, I mean, is it true that I'm not seeking anything from her? I'm, I'm attracted to her, but I'm not trying to set anything up. And I was in a place where I could genuinely say, you're one of the most beautiful women I've ever met. And because she could sense that I'm coming from a place of enjoying myself rather than needing anything from her, she was super relaxed. She actually invited me over to come and have tea with her. And it was just, it was just a beautiful, I felt really good about it because I wasn't trying to get anything, but it felt good for me to say that. And I think that is one of the the secrets around communicating do it because you enjoy it and follow that pleasure in yourself and even if she can't receive it the way um you're not going to feel rejected because you came up to be seen and not to be liked yeah yeah i love that distinction absolutely yeah because rejection is terrifying like especially and and again welcome to a man's world because we are generally the ones that have to go and approach and it is it is you it's mind-blowingly mind-blowingly scary to yeah. to kind of push yourself over your own fear of rejection and so many men and will either they do two things they'll either posture and they'll come and swagger in and, and, and be overconfident or they will collapse and they'll kind of simper in. And an intelligent, empowered, empathic woman will sniff that out about a hundred yards away, right? Absolutely, directly. Like if somebody's, the posture, I love it. Yeah, that's the moment where the first thing I think, you know, that's my teenage me thinking, wow. And then I go, oh, no. Yeah, any of the men listening or for any of the men in your life, this is a this is a key distinction for them to understand when they're approaching women. And I did it, I I was running workshops in this, or well, I wasn't running them, but I was assisting them where we were training men to do exactly this. We had some very highly trained women, attractive, highly trained, extremely emotionally intelligent women. They would sit in a chair, two of them, and we'd push the men and they would have to walk up to these women who are like eyeing them off and just say hello. Wow. And you'd see some of the, all the men would be terrified. Some of them would like, hey, and some of them would like simper in and then they would get rejected because they were trying to compensate. Then we would do some work with the men around whatever trigger it was. And then they would come back in their confidence and their power, wanting wanting to be seen, as you said, not liked. And, and I'm sure you might be able to verify this, but the women would give feedback like, oh, my God, just when you said hello, my pussy started getting wet. Or I could feel my whole breath starting to open and lean into you. You know, it's that visceral response. Yeah. 
And if you, I mean, if you have these women being, being conscious in their feminine, there's this truth in reaction. And I think if that's such a beautiful thing, but such a rare thing, right? Um, if you can meet a woman like that, you will see exactly where your masks are. You will see exactly where you match your energy because you see her reaction. You see her opening up or closing down. And this is like, this is, a, I think, um, a challenge for us because we have this reaction and then the mind starts saying, oh, but you don't know him. But, you know, don't be, don't, don't put him into something like, don't put him in a box. You know, you need to give him a chance. Like maybe, maybe he's insecure. This whole, these stories start and we try to wrap it open again. And, and oops, don't start from that point because this is not going anywhere good. Yeah. 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 Yep. Tr I would say track if you're a woman track for where it feels safe and expansive in your body and communicate from that place yeah yeah how, how did you how did you uh learn all this did you learn this through uh trial and error or did you take well, courses well, or i learned it through my desperate need i learned it through my desperate need to be liked by women svenja um i think it's a combination of how did, how did I learn this? Well, I, I actually trained with um, something called the Authentic Man Program, but that was part of an overall general quest in myself to, first of all, understand women. Second of all, understand sex and desire and be right with that. And so I've studied a whole lot of things. I've gone to some very shady tantra schools. I've learned from a lot of amazing women and men. Um, I've kind of gone from, from one end to the other. I will say that one thing that you can do as a, as, a, as a woman is to learn to appreciate and understand men on their own terms. So like a couple of the pieces that I've dropped around, well, welcome to a man's world. This is what it's like having to lead and being afraid of rejection. It's, it's, uh, it's costly on, on the nervous system, right? So when you learn and i really recommend you read allison um, i give this to kind of every woman and I'll, I'll leave it i'll leave a link for your uh for your uh viewers as well uh Svenja, i have a couple of books that i recommend every woman read and and one of my friends actually says i won't date a girl unless she's read this book and he is you know he's a cat she's like a multi-millionaire good looking fit all the things that you'd want um it's allison armstrong's book uh what's it called the queen's code is a must read. And I've also got a lecture series by her called Celebrating Men, Satisfying Women. And it will change your perception and give you a deep appreciation for men. And then I will tell you that as a, as a, I'm going to class myself as a conscious man, as one of the good men that are out there, that when I meet a woman who has done the work to understand and appreciate men, she stands out like a light bulb amongst a sea of mediocrity. So the easiest thing you can do to attract a high quality man in your life is to learn to love men, whatever is and whatever's required um, is to do that. And then secondly, you need to learn to love sex and pleasure and reclaim that in your body. And um, for some women, I know there might be a journey through through trauma and hatred of men or pleasure and that's a we can talk about that as well definitely we need to i just need to i just need to to keep that sentence in mind because it's gonna be it's it's so gonna be a tattoo on my body stand out like a light bulb in the in the sea of and mediocrity mediocrity you stand out like a lighthouse in a lighthouse. sea of mediocrity yep. yeah that's such a beautiful picture and also it's like yeah i'm I'm kind of in the middle of my journey of embracing normalcy, you know, not having the princess saying, I deserve it all because it doesn't serve me so well. But that's like, that's another chapter. You wanted to yeah. talk about sex. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got another distinction for you. I just want to add in one thing, because there's a lot of talk about safety these days. And most of the assumption is that women are the ones needing safety. And, you know, that's totally understandable and, and very correct. You know, women are physically, women absolutely need safety. 
I tell you what, though, when I meet a woman who has done the work to appreciate men, I feel safe. Yeah. I feel like I can reveal my heart. I feel like I can reveal my desire. I feel like I can reveal my vulnerability. It's it's a quantum shift in the amount of intimacy and emotional availability that I can connect to as well. So I just want to let women know that safety goes both ways and that as an empowered woman, you can, you can create safety for men and bring out all of the beautiful qualities, which you probably intuit about whatever man you're connecting to as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, I used to, last week I said, or was it the week before I said in my container, I wouldn't want to be a man in this world because like it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> It's so, so sad. yeah, it's, it's so easy because, you know, as a woman, you can just choose who do you want to be? Like, do you want to be the strong, in, in which way do you want to be unhappy? Like, do you want to be the strong, independent woman? Do you want to be like the wifey at home, the housewife? How do you want to be unhappy? Like, because we have these role models and you can just adapt to them. You know, we're all, we're human beings. We can adapt, but as a man, nothing is right. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Nothing as a man, everything you do is wrong. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, and that's why, you know, I think my piece around safety beforehand, it was, is so necessary because the more you can create safety for a man, the more he's going to open up, the more you're going to get what you want, which is this emotional intimacy and connection. And you're going to bring out his protector and his provider and all of these wonderful masculine qualities um yeah. but yeah he, and then you're letting him win right if you scold him if you shame him if you disdain what he does just like anybody he's going to he's going to retreat and mm. that's when all the challenges start yeah so, I, I found blame to be the one thing that is the beginning of the end if you start mm. blaming him for your feelings it's 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 basically lost yeah yeah that's right yeah you can yeah can you can you say codependency for sure that's yeah. Um, yeah 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 that's right you can share your feelings and that's really important but blaming him or needing him to be responsible um yeah is it's a it's a slippery slope yeah mm. you can make him responsible for making you happy <laughs> He, he likes that you can absolutely do that <laughs> but but if you yeah that's like the worst treatment for for men I found in 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 my dating time saying yeah I feel you know that's actually violence free communication right I feel bad when you come home late that's not violence free that's blaming like you you make me feel bad it's not it's it's not a good way of communicating and it's in so many books and it's in so many courses and that's not not how you show that's not how you show your feelings and yeah you can't and you can't he can't win this is a this is a a trap which like many women i notice i think women are very very good at emotional traps whereas men are more physical but women will a statement like I don't feel good when you come home late does not tell a man how he can serve you or how he can please you. But if you say, if you say, I love it when I get a text from you, when you know you're going to be home late, yeah. you know, then the man goes, Oh, well, that's what I can do. And if you say, look, uh, and then if you say something like when I get a text from you and I know you'll be late, I know how much time I have to run a bath and start playing with myself in the bedroom, waiting for you to come home. Right? Yeah. If you want to add in the sexy to it. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, I know what I need to do to also get the things that I want. And suddenly everybody's winning. You're getting the communication. He's learning how to treat you. And it's an upward spiral as opposed to, I just hate it when, you're, when you come home late. Don't ever do yeah. it again. Yeah, it and sucks. that's, I mean, some part of me says that's like a high game manipulation <laughs> because well, that, yeah, it is, it is. And at the same time, maybe it's the okay part of manipulation. So I would say it's building polarity, okay? Mm. In a sense, all, in, in one sense, all human communication is manipulation. So yeah. 
from that perspective, choose the one where both people can win and which increases the polarity and the sexy times yeah. and, um, and you know, enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. How can you let him win? I think that's that's um, a good question to just, because I have so many girls wondering, what can I say? Like, give me the words. It's like, I give them vocabulary. Yeah. I feel like they're writing it down and they are learning it by heart because so many things are just blocking us from naturally finding the right words because we weren't taught what to say. We weren't taught how to say it. And we weren't taught how to, how to communicate feelings. So I feel like, they are learning it like like a foreign language and that's fine that's fine because you need to have some approach to just start doing it and see what's happening i love the moments when these when those people that are already like married or in a long term relationship they start doing this work like only tiny tiny pieces and suddenly like like such a huge energy shift is happening in the relationship because they are putting in the polarity spice. It's like they're throwing it into the food that's been cooked for 10 years, tasted the same, was okay, kind of okay with everyone. And then you start spicing it up with polarity and suddenly it's like 10 years ago where all the chemistry starts flaming up again and everything changes. And I just love this. Yeah, yeah, totally. Communication is like, it's it's the foundation of everything. It's the foundation of connection, of intimacy, of sex, of happiness. So the better you get at your communication, um, the better everything's going to be. Now, if if women out there want vocabulary or actual words, that's kind of the equivalent of men's pickup lines, right? And you all know what happens when someone uses a pickup line on you. It's like, uh, unless he's smoking hot, and and in which case it probably doesn't matter what he says. Um, you're going to sense there's a pickup line. So here's a way that you can, this is what I do and what I notice other people in, in these kind of authentic relating circles do is you just reveal vulnerably what you're actually feeling and your desires. So with this thing of like, you come home late, um, you can just say, it makes me feel, I notice I feel anxious when I don't, when you when you come home late and then I don't want to and I withdraw and what I would really love is to know when you're coming home because that lets me get all excited and anticipate what I'm going to do with you when you do come home so would a text message be okay um that kind of thing and so you're you're sharing how you feel without making him wrong you're sharing your desire and then there's a way for him to win. And that kind of stuff, you already know what you're feeling and what you want. And you can kind of share that. Yeah. If you can stop expecting that he guesses what you want, that he always knows what he should be doing and he's doing it, he's not doing it on purpose to make you unhappy. Oh, yeah. To make you unhappy. Yes. <laughs> That's right. You got to check your assumptions. I was on a, I was on a woman's, uh, in a woman's mastermind uh, for, you know, there were a bunch of women wanting to find their dream man. And one of them said, ask the question, how do you tell what a man's intentions is? And I just said, well, you ask him, right? You, yeah. you can't work it out from this side of the, oh. uh, of the phone. You have oh. to ask him. Uh, and then I can elaborate on that because, you need to ask him. And then you also need to track over a period of time do his words match his actions. <clears throat> Cause that's also, that's congruence. Um, and then you also, this is what I suggest. Okay. Ready for the one piece of dating advice, which I think is absolutely crucial for women spend at least three months, two months minimum dating him so that you go through two or three variations of your cycle do you like him in week one do you like him in week two what about week three what about week four what about week one again okay because you're kind of a different person at each stage right um and that's really important and then the other piece i used to work with maya diamond who has a, a program called call in your man and her number one piece of dating advice is take it slow and just allow your nervous systems time to connect time to see how he responds when you're 
moody, how he responds when you're really wanting more connection, how he responds when you're when you're kind of even and um, and be able to communicate that along the way. And then you'll have a good sense of like, all right, should should we continue for another three months or is it thank you and uh, but no thanks? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And and choose choose intimacy over commitment. It's like your body. Oh, I love that. Your, your body. I love knows, that. The ex, your body feels the truth, and your head will tell you something else. Like if you start this work, if you start getting to these fields, you will not get commitment from a man after two weeks, no matter how much your anxious kicks in and how much pressure you put on him and how, no matter how much, uh, how hot you are and how much he wants you. Like if he is the man you actually want, he's not going to give you commitment after two weeks, which sucks. I know, but it's uh. the truth. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> my body says, oh, wow, I relax. It's like very rare that I, instantly relax around people but my nervous system is going to show me the way why my head tells me oh yeah but he's not like I have my list like everybody has their list and there are a few non-negotiables and many negotiables but kind of important and he's not going to match every point and that's what that's what my head is going to pick on I'm going to talk myself out of it and my body is going to say, just shut up and enjoy. Oh, my God, will you relax at some point and just enjoy the intimacy he creates for you? Because you're always saying you want this and now you're having it and you're talking yourself out of yeah. it, which is fear of intimacy and blah, 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 blah. Like a thousand reasons why you would tell yourself he's not right, but your body says otherwise. And the opposite, mm -hmm. you know? Um, feeling like seeing, oh, wow, he's hot. He's doing the work. Like he says, his profile says he's meditating every day. He's the one, you know, and your body says, and you actually meet him and your conversations go, all right. Um, and your body says nothing like pussy is gone to vacation. Uh, nothing is happening. <laughs> and you're like, there's something. Yeah, so something is, what, what's wrong with me? Like, what, we're always like, what's wrong with me? Not what's wrong with, what's wrong with me? Yeah, nothing's wrong with you. It's, it's just, it's just not, not, no, nothing's happening. So don't waste your time. Your body knows the way, not your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find, find safety and spaciousness and connection in your body and, and track for that is, is, a, is a really good idea. Yeah. For sure and then try and manage try and manage all the thoughts in your mind and and do the work either on your on your blockages around men or your past history or just learning to love men i think learning to love men as men is one of the best things you can possibly do because then you start tracking and understanding you know your little radar is on picking out red flags but then you've got context for understanding what they are from his point of view yeah, yeah. and from, from a man's world because uh, they're very different yeah I still want to know even though you said the line with red flags I want to know what are your red flags what are my red flags in a yeah. woman yeah oh that's a, that's a really interesting question I well um emotional um intelligence and communication huge you know so you know, if someone responds, if someone can, so emotional intelligence and ability to communicate, and then that's a, well, these are green flags actually. And then ability to, I track in my body, how safe do I feel? Like last, this weekend, I actually asked a woman who I'd only very recently met if she would come to a Shibari workshop with me, you know, which is those who don't know, it's like, it's Japanese rope bondage. I will basically be tying this woman up. And I had a big chat to her beforehand and said, look, I like you. I feel safe around you, which is why I'm asking you. I'm not here trying to hook up with you, but I do find you attractive. This is what, you know, would you like to come? Uh, and she really, she said, when I heard all of that, my nervous system relaxed I got where you're coming from and I, I'd love to because it's something I'd love to do too. And we had a, so her ability to, to receive that and respond to my vulnerability 
was also a green flag for me of like, okay, this is going to go well. Because if she had kind of sent an awkward text message or not um, reflected back to me what I was saying, I probably would have called it off. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's definitely what I look for. Um, yeah. Yeah. And and I think the, the 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 final green flag is, and this is also came up in 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 this mastermind. You know what do what do men want? And one of the guys said, which I agree with him. I just want a woman who laughs at my jokes. Like seriously, <laughs> it's just that's letting a man win, right? And it's it's I have to say it's just so it's just just so affirming. It's so life affirming. So. Yeah. He's going to go. win if he makes you happy. That's like, that's the yeah. ultimate thing. If you enjoy yourself and your life, he's going to enjoy you and life as well. So you know that there's, there's a saying like happy wife, happy life, which I found so stupid for so many years. And I'm kind of getting there. It's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah for sure maybe without all the toxic behavior you know the the i'm gonna yeah just let her go on vacation let her have her fun and i'm like if she's happy then we're gonna be happy like then she leaves me alone she leaves me in peace that's yeah. not what i mean by that but if if you let him make you happy and tell him and show him show him rather how he can make you happy you actually don't need yeah. more yeah, yeah. Men do need repetition. I will it's, <laughs> to say we need to be told or shown more than once. So don't expect us to pick up on the subtle cues that you do because we're just not built that way. Well, not all of us are. Personally, I'm pretty, I mean, I would say that I'm very sensitive and empathic and I pick up on a lot of cues, but even then there's, you know, big blind spots that I have. And I would say that I'm probably more empathic than most men. So you're going, just be prepared to not get upset about the fact that you need to tell someone a couple of times or more or show them. Yeah. Um, and I will add in a red flag, which is somebody who, somebody who talks a lot uh, without, without connecting with me, mm. you know? So I think there's, it's a, it's a, it's a thing of like over explaining or talking too much. Talking a lot is fine as long as you're connected to me. But if you're kind of like suddenly just talking because you want to get something you because you're just talking and you're not connected to me, that's, that's a red flag for me that mm, this, this person only has so much emotional capacity to stay in connection. That's so. that that's avoidance, right? I'm trying to, you know, I, I use my words to keep you away from me. I'm going to talk about myself and explain myself to be liked, actually. But what happens is the exact opposite. Yeah, so yeah many, it's one of, those, one of those dreadful paradoxes. I want to say a lot of things so you like me, but really, it's secretly, it's a defense to keep you at a distance. Yeah. yeah. And so that stuff, if you get feedback, from your friends or your close advisors that that's what's going on you just need to do some of the work to repair that yeah uh, and then all of your relationships are going to shift yeah yeah and this is often the work that i do with with women like i'm one of my specialties is repairing anxious attachment styles mm -hmm. um and the, and anxious attachment comes out in this clinginess this neediness this over explaining this constantly worrying does he like me it, is he going to leave me why didn't he text me you didn't get a text back so your brain explodes and then he comes back and you're grumpy and then you wonder why you didn't have sex that night or why the relationship is going south this is, this is all anxious attachment and it can be shifted for sure so didn't repair that in me why? <laughs> Why didn't you repair that in me? <laughs> oh, we're, we're, we're saving that up for a little bit later. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, I wanted to go one step back and then two steps forward. Um, one step back, going back to he's, he's showing you exactly what his truth is. L okay. leave the interpretation you know it's like um okay he's not he's not showing up that might be because you know he is avoidant he has fear of blah 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 he's he just has to we just need to all these explanations that women make up 
over the behavior of a man. He's showing you exactly up to which point he's willing to go and mm -hmm. how he's feeling. You don't need to make up stories about it. Like if he, he's either in or he isn't and you can feel it and you're trying to talk yourself out of that feeling because you want it so much, because you love to fix broken men, because you, you know, because you just need to get over this and then everything's going to be fine and you have your happy end. If he's not showing up for you, if he's not texting back, if he's not texting in, in, in like uh, in, in first place, this is my one rule in dating actually in dating apps. I'm not the first to write. I've always done that. And I was always annoyed that I had to do it. Yeah. And this is, this would be the energy I would go into like, why am I running after you? <laughs> not, oh, no. like, not online. Like why, you know, just give him a day or two. It's okay. You, it, this doesn't mean that, that he's interested I'm in. Other more than you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. I'm, I'm listening. I've, I've got some opinions on this strategy. Sonia, but I, <laughs> you out. I don't want to hear them. I don't want to. No, it's like, I'm so likely to do the first steps and then drag the whole thing. Because, you know, I'm a manifester, I initiate. That's like my energy. I'm always the first to do things and I don't want to be this anymore because it's not, it does, it clashes with the feminine. And it's so good for me to just lay back, relax and see what's happening and react okay. to and go into and let him lead the first step. And then I'm secure. Then I know that this is actually what he wants. And I don't have to find out if he just does that because I did the first step. That's like, that's my brain fuck, right? So that's, oh, my, that's my one rule. I'm going to let him do the first step into new territory. I'm going to let him know I would love to go out with you, but I'm not going to ask him on a date. You know, so I'm just letting him lead. Then I'm going to be secure that this is what he wants. And he's not doing it because I asked him to. And then he's going to cancel or then I'm, ah, pfft, yeah, that's my thing. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Perfect. I mean, look, if that's at the, at the end of the day, if it works for you, then it's a good strategy. My, my strategy, and I, and I understand the reasoning behind it as well. You know, let him make the first move, of course, then you know that he's interested in you and it makes a lot of sense. Um, from my side as a man, if I match with somebody and I don't get anything back, so I've got, you know, I've got to work through my abject terror of having to let, you know, write something, which I hope this person who I kind of like will find enticing enough that they will want to respond and pray to God that it doesn't sound too needy or too jerky or too straightforward or not straightforward enough because men are like, we have to lead, but no, we have to be sensitive and show respect. Um, we can't, we can't just want sex straight up, but maybe that's kind of what I want. But it takes, you know, how do I connect with this woman and show her that I'm deep and vulnerable and and authentic and a wonderful person? And, the and all of that kind of goes into it goes into this kind of like, uh, hi, how's your day? Kind of thing. <laughs> so it's just like, and then you write it and you send it and you just go, oh God. It's never going to work. And then, you know, you crawl off and well, you probably start, I don't know, you do whatever you do when you get rejected. So the, from a man's side, of, from a man's side, when a woman says, hi, it's like, oh, this is wonderful. We can, we can do something. You've let him win, right? He gets a little shot of testosterone. That's going to come through in his, in the energy of his message. So for me personally, like I understand all the psychology of either saying writing first or not writing first. I just track nowadays for what feels good. Do I feel inspired to write something to this woman? If so, I write it from that inspiration. It might be goofy or it might be nerdy or it might be smart or witty or just hi. But if that if I'm writing from that energy and it feels good in me, then as you said, I'm writing to be seen and not to be liked. And I think when I lead from that place, 
everything else tends to sort itself out and a lot of the mind stuff tends to dissipate. Yeah, um, yeah. So... Yeah. If you write, I don't care what you write. It's gonna, I'm gonna feel the chemistry right away. Like if there's the energy is there, okay. then you can just say hi, how are you? And it's gonna be unraveled. My answer is gonna be, you know, when the energy doesn't doesn't start, I'm like, I'm good. How are you? And then noticing already, no, this isn't working. But when I've noticed in my body, that's what I meant by feminine truth. I notice in my body when I feel like sharing my heart, like. My day's been great. I've enjoyed the sun so much. Uh, what did you enjoy most about this day? And then it starts, like, then it goes. And that's, it doesn't have to be like, he doesn't need to write a book or he doesn't need to, to like, talk about my profile or something or just give, give compliments. I don't need that. I just right yeah. away feel the, 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 the yeah, the, the desire to open my heart for him. And that's what's going to happen. And then it unfolds. But the opposite happens when I just feel like writing back, I'm good, how are you? And I can just, yeah, I can just as well. Yeah. Well, exactly, exactly. You you kind of already know. So so two things there. Like when a man, it's it's women, as I said, the pussy has the power. Like men do not get lots of matches, you know. So, so we are on dating apps our problem is we don't get enough matches women's problems is you get too many matches and too many dick pics right and so this, this my problem. Is, yeah <laughs> maybe it's not a problem but you know in general what i hear from my female friends is to say like, oh god and so you can you can start building you know your wall and your radar can start getting a little over overstimulated you know you kind of you see a couple of my friends who were very very attractive um women over the years that i've known them because they used to be models and djs and they're very they're quite eccentric but extremely beautiful they're just so used to blocking men that even if you you just want to be their friend it's very hard to get through all the defenses um, and you don't necessarily want to be like that. You have to be discerning, yes. But there's a there's a sweet spot, which, and so what I would suggest is whatever you're doing, try doing the opposite for a while just to see what happens, just to kind of test, test whether you are coming from your truth or your trauma in some of these uh, in some of these strategies. What would happen if I did for the next 10 guys that I was actually interested in, what would happen if I just said hi and didn't make it mean anything um, other than I'm kind of curious about you and would like to get to know you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the very worst, yeah. you know, you'll get, you'll get a response back and you'll be able to calibrate from there um, a lot more accurately. And it'll, you know, the man will go, oh, my God, this is great. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> trust, yeah. Trust, me, then, trust me. I think it's so important for men to realize that it's not their fault that she's become like that. Like it's not as much as it's not her job to fix your mother wound and your, you know, your attachment style. It's not your job to fix the assholes in her history. Um, it's her job. Mm. If she wants to do that, she, everybody has a choice, right? And you can just settle with, with whatever's, right for you and what you want in this life and it's mm -hmm. not everybody finds their fulfillment in a good partnership um and i think that yeah again. that's a hard truth but, but possible and and on that note like Svenny, i want to apologize on behalf of all men to any of the women listening for just the assholery of men and even as and if you can find it in your heart and i hope it's a when you find it in your heart to forgive men for whatever experiences you have and that could be a long road or it could be a short road but it's a road that i feel we all have to travel in our own way myself included because i'm a man and i i take responsibility i feel the weight of that and so i apologize for all of all of what has happened to you and my fervent wish is that you know you and your audience find that capacity to 
love, forgive and to love men again, because it's, it's so, it's so necessary for all of us. Yeah. And it's a thin line between, you know, feeling the pain of men and loving men for identity crises they have, because mm. in this world, it's, it's an intense time to live in. And it's a thin line to understand that and being okay with his trauma and um, wanting to fix that. That's a thin line. And between saying, no, it's not my job. Like, I don't, I don't get it. It's not my fault that you became like that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be there. That's why relationships mm -hmm. are so hard, right? Because yeah. it's a <laughs> thin line. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> There's a beautiful thing in the German language. Um, we have this word um, um, Traumpartner, which means dream partner. And mm -hmm. trauma partner is like trauma partner. So that's just an A more. So you have, it's almost the same word, dream partner and, and trauma partner, kind of, you know? Interesting. And, yes, interesting. so interesting. interesting. And yeah. that's one of the big realizations that I had last year. In dating apps, I'm going to make you read your profile in a second. So just so you can get prepared. Like if you use dating apps, I'm going to make you read your profile. Um, I might read the profile. Yes. Um, okay. And I found out that I'm doing what you said. You need to do the opposite. It's like, yeah. Because whenever I was like, you know, you're swiping and you're like, okay, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. And I was at some point I was realizing, okay, that guy. I'm swiping him left because he looks nice. And I was like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Like he looks nice. So that means boring. That means he won't hurt me. I don't need that. Like I don't need boredom. I need drama. I'm going to swipe right to the guys. I know exactly this is going to be drama. Like, you know, somebody with, he's going to be a long distance he comes from another country oh i'm so interested in cultures i'm going to swipe right no you're interested in no. crying your eyes out because he hasn't been around for a month fucking god yeah that's that's how i'm working and then i realized i'm doing trauma swiping and that's the thing <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna yeah that sounds true well i mean there there's a there's a very deep body of work around this called imago theory which was developed by Harville Hendricks, which basically says, so check this out, we attract partners to complete what was not, not fulfilled in childhood. Yeah. And there's a lot of research on this. And so I also want to kind of normalize and forgive that part of you that is doing the trauma swiping because its intention is it's, it's that younger part of you that, is crying out to receive what it didn't receive when it was young yeah. and now is like, well, I can, I'm just going to recreate that with my adult attachment partners. Yeah. And uh, yeah. then the more that you can do that repair work on the inside, and we've done a bunch of that work in different areas of your life, um, then the results in the outside world start to shift. You, yeah. you start tracking for different things. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, you know, I'm doing a presentation on trauma in the very near future, and I'm going to start a series on trauma. And a lot of it is around um, this sense that like learning about trauma is kind of traumatic, right? And then how can we kind of normalize these experiences and just go, well, sure, you're talking about trauma swiping, but it's kind of what everybody does. Yeah. Because these parts, as a wise friend of mine once said, these part, these things just need to play themselves out, and to to have an excess of kindness for ourselves and for these parts, which actually are greater than us. You know, they have a lot more power over us than we we really would like to admit. And to and uh, it's also just like sex, of right? Yeah. It's like sex, you know, when sex brain comes on, you can forget all of the things you told your girlfriends you weren't going to do again. Sex brain is in the house and it's just, it's on for young and old, right? And then, um, and, and these things have to be treated both with respect and kindness because they're very powerful forces, much more powerful than the affirmations and, and, and little lists we write each other every day. And that's part of the fun and the challenge of being human. 
And and yeah, the fun. Yeah, it's kind of hard. That I learned from you to say, and that's also kind of hard. And since my life, you just said that like in a by sentence and it changed my whole life. I'm doing that mm -hmm. constantly. I'm, you know, bumping into something, it hurts. And I'm, oh, that's also kind of hard. It makes me feel alive. <gasps> And then, you know, existential kink such. We need to talk about existential kink in some other life because that's like life changing. But um, um, yeah, it's always trauma response. Like my whole dating life has been trauma response. Um, and because I love dramatic things, I'm the, I mean, I died two times. I love dramatic things in my life. So I love the suspense. Like, how is it going to end? Well, you know, I'm, I'm constantly <laughs> doing shitty things. <laughs> This is where we segue into conscious uncoupling. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Yeah. I died yeah. twice. I love dramatic things. Look, and one of the things they say about secure attachment, which I've also, you know, experienced is like, it feels boring. You know, the boring guy out there is actually the one who's going to make a much better partner for you than the, yeah. than the bad guy, the bad guy or the nerd that you continually draw in. Um, I know. And I also... Yeah, I also kind of want to say like this this trauma pattern. I, I'm coming up with a revised, a much more nuanced version of trauma because trauma is a pattern and we can't help but create patterns. It's just a pattern that is expressing itself in a slightly wrong, in a slightly misplaced context and time. That's all. These parts have a really important intelligent function. It's just that they've kind of leaked over into the context of dating or business, et cetera. And they're creating a little bit of havoc there. Um, but to not, you know, trauma is kind of like a, it's a shaming, blaming kind of word. It's like, no, you have a very intelligent pattern, which probably saved your life at one point. And now it's just swimming in the wrong pool. And we need to like either help it swim in that pool or return it to where it where it, um, where it's best suited, um, and when we do that, then your dating is going to take a quantum shift. Yeah, I love I love the part of me that still when you said like the nice guy is probably the way better guy for you to date. I love like eighty percent of me just said no, yeah. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> because here's the challenging thing: is like uh, when we when we when we were growing up as very young kids, our experience of our parents is what we coded as love. So if you grew up in a chaotic household where you never knew when you were going to get love, um, you repeat, you, you basically assume that's what love is when you become an adult, you know, and if you grew up in a place where you, you know, your mom and dad kind of ignored you or didn't attend to your needs, when you meet a guy who's avoidant, you go, oh, this is what my, uh, this is what I remember love as being like, and you're kind of hooked into that. So it takes some awareness to then start and some therapy or some kind of coaching to shift that. Or you just enjoy the drama. You can also choose you that. Enjoy exactly or you enjoy the drama and you know to be honest some things some and sometimes these things may never change and that was a really eye-watering truth which i got delivered one time is like russ these things about you may never change and in that case yeah. we go to david data's uh statement of like your job is to make art out of your kinks you know if you like drama how can you make art out of that in your life? Because that may never change. And, uh, and it also has lots of positive qualities. Uh, you know, you're an expressive, wonderful, amazing woman, Senya. So, you know, drama is, is also life and vitality and expression and all the things which make you a fun person to have at a party or a dinner, right? Yeah. So yeah. don't yeah. want to get through the baby out with the bathwater. Seriously. Like, how are we, where are we going to go if Svenja doesn't have any dramatic stories to tell anymore? I forbid myself, you know, when I cross the border to France down here, it's like um, I'm 1,400 kilometers from home. So I forbid myself from going on Tinder. <laughs> I was like, don't do it. Don't. Yeah. And we all know what happens if you go like, don't do it. You know, first evening, bottle of champagne. Let's see who lives here. <laughs> See what's on offer in this town. Uh, just start your profile with 
you know, there's nothing sexier than a plane ticket or a return date, Svenny. You could just say it by like, I'm only here for one week. That'll, you know, that'll bring all the boys to the yard. They'll love that. No, I got boys in my yard. See, I brought my dogs this time. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure, to, to kind of control me, to kind of keep my family safe. You know, I, I made them come so I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. To me, would you read your Would you read your profile to us? Like, what does? I don't have a I don't have a profile. I I what? I suck. I suck at Tinder. I'm just all. Oh, wow. Anytime I've gone on there, I have a great face for podcasting. Um, and every time I've gone on there, the only the furthest I've got is having discussions with Asian women about their pets. And I'm not attracted to Asian women. And I'm just like. <laughs> So I, I did do my profile in, in um I'd have to call it up and and I made a kind of a, a joke profile. Yeah, you should definitely oh. not write no Asian women. <laughs> it's not gonna work, is it? I'll send it to you. It is quite funny. It is, I'll bring it up for you because I actually put a chunk of work into my profile pictures. Um so I, I will send them to you. Maybe I'll post them to, for your audience. You can have a little chuckle. Um, awesome. <laughs> but I can't, I haven't got Tinder on my, uh, on my I, re, well, I recently had a breakup, a conscious uncoupling. So yeah, that's um, gonna go for. I, yeah, I think in that's terms of, so there's a, sta- there's a statement about picking someone to marry and it goes along the lines of don't marry someone who you wouldn't divorce which at first glance is like, what on earth are you talking about? But to me, it points to connecting with someone who has enough emotional intelligence to be able to navigate the reality that maybe this isn't right or that maybe we're, we, we're not meant to be together forever and to, to be able to, yeah, conduct themselves with grace. And, um, you know, it's not easy to do these things, but it can be easier than, and, and can, and it doesn't have to be traumatic. And so, you know, we did this beautiful ceremony around, we forgave each other. There's elements of like, we forgave each other for all the things that, you know, we either didn't get or that we wanted, but never received. We forgave ourselves for, you know, perhaps wanting things that the other partner couldn't provide. And yet we still, and so we were upset we did lots of appreciations and remembering all of the good times. We then had a little chat about, okay, how do we want to communicate and connect going forward? You know, do we need to take space? What about, you know, repairing things like logistics and, and, and money owed and I left my undies at your place, that kind of, how do we want to do that? And then we ended with this statement of like, what's mine is mine, what's yours is yours. And it was, it was beautiful. It was, it was a really beautiful ceremony um, and just helped, clo- you know, close a lot of loops because when someone just takes off, it opens a loop in the mind, which the mind tries to close and, and it creates endless stories. You know, in the past, I've been super traumatized when that's happened to me, when someone's broken up with me and there's been no contact, my inner child just loses its shit I feel like this is all my fault. I'm definitely a bad person. I can't talk to this person, which my attachment system has has bonded with and has now has been ripped away. And it's, you know, I've honestly spent one one time a person broke up with me. I spent two and a half years just obsessing about her and trying to close this loop in my mind. Um, whereas in this current situation, it's been a lot gentler there's so much care and love that we have for each other. And it's just, you know, without making anybody wrong, it's just not the right, it's not the right combination. And so can you gracefully let them go and wish them well? And, you know, one of my friends said, I don't know, I don't know where this statement comes from, but, you know, you pray that they get what they want and they get it before you, you know, that's your wish for them. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it, there's an art which I don't think many people are taught at all. Yeah. I, I don't know. Does somebody lead you through that? It's like 
it's like a, a ceremony yeah but do, do others attend do you does it was just a little structure that she proposed um and i was like this looks fantastic mm -hmm. yeah let's run through this and so you can use that structure um or, or anything that feels good i mean she proposed it to me and i just loved it there's no reason why you couldn't work out something which felt good between the two of you um but certainly appreciating their good points and their good qualities and all the good times you've had um as well as presencing you know the disappointment and sadness and grief without making the other person wrong is can be can be very very healing and help you know help you shift and and repair what you know and just reduce the amount of grief because afterwards there's a natural grieving process and grief is something also that i'm very familiar with uh and and needs care you, you need you need to have care for yourself and to understand what it's like when you grieve mm -hmm. and you know that comes like the drama queen learn to find your way to enjoy it it's such an intense thing that is able to to even even yeah make your heart break like there's heartbreak syndrome right so you can even you're missing out if you're just trying to numb it to to get over it as soon as you can to get rid of it to close the chapter to I don't mean like um, pull it and stay in it because you like it, but I mean just realize what's there and don't try to change anything because it's gonna yeah. it's gonna heal naturally. Your body knows how to do it. It knows how to how to do the alchemy in your body. It knows how that. to yeah. heal you. Your mind doesn't know that. Your body knows. And mm. grief is such. It's like happiness is it's like I love in November usually I love uh, melancholy coming along. I listen to my favorite um, my favorite musicians to a lot of piano music. Um, I only sit on my piano during winter time because you know I enjoy the wave. It's like it starts doing yeah. something and when I wake up at four a.m. and I want to sit down and play the piano because I know something's in me that wants to wants to reveal itself and I just need to like play a certain song and it's going to happen oh that's so beautiful so grief and all the the sad feelings it's so much intensity and we we don't want it like yeah it has no space and this is such a beautiful way of yeah kind of finishing the loop like let it be a circle which it is in the end but usually it's like you're alone in that right you're finishing your circle on your own always with open questions with hurt feelings with I've had that you just said something about um you've had these two and a half years of obsessing um about someone what they're doing and if it's your fault and um I have this with someone just deciding from one moment to the other it's just deciding like I didn't see it coming it's like the worst feeling in the world I didn't see it coming we develop all these toxic behaviorisms out of I didn't see it coming I need to be prepared like from one moment to the other somebody decides that you're not an important person anymore like that you mm -hmm. don't you don't deserve their love anymore out of Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> building up over years apparently I don't know and that was like my I decided many things that I don't know about like unconsciously I decided many things in that moment and that wouldn't have happened if there was this possibility this it's been like seven years ago <laughs> I don't even know who I was at that time but still seven years ago can be like yesterday yeah so. yeah. yeah it's yeah. uh I, lo I love how this all works. And, you know, last time I think in our last podcast, no, in our last session, we had the moment where we thought, wouldn't it be easier not to just to just not start the personal development, to just be okay, happy in a, in a mediocre oh, world. <laughs> many, many people live long and happy lives in denial. And sometimes I want to be one of them. It doesn't necessarily get easier. It just, you just, more personal development just lets you, um, handle more complexity which ultimately i think is what the world needs we need more people who can deal with nuance and conflict and complex emotions skillfully and artfully because the world is becoming is demanding that of us you know we can't 
much as we would like to play small, that opportunity is no longer available to us. We have to keep stepping up. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, even though it's uncomfortable, you know, for those of us who are awakening, staying small is going to be more uncomfortable. It's almost like we don't have a choice. Yeah, um, the, the easy seeming way is never the easy way. And the hard seeming way is always the easy way in the end. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't pray for an easy life. Pray for the strength to endure a difficult one. Uh, that's, uh, you know, okay, it's, it's let, a call to arms. Let, let's just exchange eight more quotes. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Quote, quote, quote. Yeah. yeah. Um, ah, it's been an hour. I, I'm like, I feel so full. Like my cup filled up. My cup fills up from from um, talking about things like that and thinking and just diving into other people's realities and other people's truths. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Super good. Super good. Oh, there's much more we can say, but yeah. Should oh, I... we will. Like if you're up to it. Yeah. Um, th this is yeah, like... I love this. Yeah. It's so good. So, yeah. so good. So many people yeah. are using you, by the way, to um, improve their English. <laughs> Great. They write to me all the time. I don't dare to write a comment because I think it's going to be not good oh, no. language. And, bring it on. Um, yeah. Bring it on. Or just write it in German and I'll translate it. And uh, But don't, yeah, don't let that. Don't let your practicing. I will definitely not judge you. Your your um your English is a thousand times better than my German, and I'd rather I'd rather hear it as it comes. It's so welcome. And Facebook <laughs> translates it uh, automatically. Like if you post it, oh, like, yeah. and you can just click on translate, and uh, it's right underneath. Facebook offers it, so you can just write your comments whenever. But you know that people, you know that you, you're always welcome the way you are. Ah, oh, yeah. Russ, cool. thank you so much for all of this. This was so rich again. And you know that we always write like we're going to talk about sex and then it's just a bystander somewhere. So we need to like maybe, maybe. Just do yeah. the next what? one. We can just talk about sex, sex and sex. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. Great. We should I'm eat. so up for that. That'd be great. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so yeah. um, Russ thank you so much people you know where to find him you know where to sign up for a free session with him if you don't you're missing out I can just yeah I can not say that often enough you you need to get your shit sorted we need to get our shit if you want if you want the whole package in your life like if you want a happy fulfilled deep relationship you need to get your shit sorted it won't work in any other way and this is a good way of doing it so yeah do it <laughs> be yeah. good have the bestest day ever enjoy uh what time is it it's uh just uh nearly six o'clock so i'm gonna head out for dinner go and visit some friends and um thank you to everyone listening i hope you got something from this and uh by all means be in touch if i can help you in any way and i look forward to meeting you have a great evening thank you, you so too. Much. Ciao, thanks bye Ciao.